um, wow, burger sauce, hot dog sauce, holy mackerel, they got everything here. Welcome back to another video, so it's sort of summer here, I don't know if you can see the sun shining so much, but it's pretty awesome, the sun is it's really warm here today, um, it's Friday, uh, Friday afternoon. Actually, just around noon, so uh, it's a great time to get to work on the burgers. So the, the idea about this video was a little bit strange. Uh, I was watching a similar video on a, a channel called Passport for Two. Great channel, go check them out. I have the link at the bottom. And they made a comment about Krautsalat, also a very cool channel. I'll have his link below. In Krautsalat, he made his video about his perfect cheeseburger. Um, I like a good cheeseburger but my preference is actually just for a hamburger. So I thought, all right, I wanna show you my perfect hamburger made with everything that I found here in Germany. And I think you can make a very, very good American style hamburger here. Um, you just have to sort of go searching for the right ingredients if you wanna make one like mine. And my perfect burger is a little bit different from Krautsalats and what yours is gonna be, of course. So terminology is the first thing I wanted to talk to you about. In the US, we don't normally say, I'm going to do a barbecue, even though I know this is probably called a barbecue here in the U.S. It's sort of a different thing. Uh, Kratzel had a very good analogy. I think he said something along the lines of, uh, if I told you all I was going to go have a beer and then I had a Kolsch, a lot of you would say, that's not a beer. Some of you might freak out. That's, you know, that's a light beer, I guess. I don't know. And it's sort of the same thing to barbecuing versus grilling. Grilling is simply you're putting the flesh on the grill. Barbecuing to an American is more something that's done like a low and slow, low temperature, slow cooking, basting it in a dry rub or a, a barbecue sauce, a wet sauce, but it's not really grilling. Grilling is different. Grilling is hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken. So if I was planning on making some burgers and I wanted to have some friends over, I wouldn't say I was gonna barbecue. I would say I'm gonna grill some burgers and dogs. I had a job where I traveled all over the US. Actually, I, I went to every state, Canada and Mexico, with the exception of Nevada. I don't know why I never made it to Nevada. But anyway, the variations in how people make their burgers is as different as there are grains of sand on the beach. It's, it's incredible. So again, this is my version of what I like to do with my burger. And, and to be honest with you, even my burger, I do variations of it. We'll do that today as well. Sometimes I put cheese on it. Sometimes I add this or that. You know, um, I've seen people put avocado slices on a burger. Eggs are really good on a burger, fried eggs. So it, it, there's just a million different ways you can do it. And, and I'm just going to show you maybe one or two or three ways that I do it. So for me, grilling is really a process. And it's, it's about getting everything ready. You know, I have on the table here um, some sauces. I have back here, of course. Hamburger, hot slice. Uh, I have tomato, the lettuce. I have some good burger buns that I found. But it all really starts with a beer. I don't know if the microphone's going to pick that up. The neighbor's vacuuming. Sorry. Prost. Oh, and by the way, I don't use the glass. Um, I did that. I know some people made comments that I was drinking out of the wrong kind of glass. I'm a pretty simple guy, to be honest, and I drink it like this all the time, so, yeah. Prost. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's good. The next thing we have to move on to is the meat. This is a very, very important thing, and I want to tell you a quick little story about years ago, I was on vacation in Florida with some German friends, and they wanted me to make them a good American burger. I said, absolutely. They start heading for the meat section. And I said, no, 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 no. We're going to the butcher. We go in, we get some really good fatty meat. It's a little bit white. Now, I know, I know some of you are gonna probably freak out when I say this, but I'll tell you one really good source of very good hamburger meat is Aldi. They have this Bio Hackfleisch. Looks a little bit on the white side. It's a little bit fattier, but it is Perfect. Not the gemisch, not the mixed. It, just pick the bio hackfleisch, rinderfleisch. 
it's fantastic for burgers. A lot of that fat just burns off of there, of course, but it makes a really good juicy hamburger, and that's what you need, in my opinion. Now for the condiments, the dressing. You know, for me, it's pretty simple. I, I, I go along with this song. Um, Jimmy Buffett came out with this song years ago, but this is how I've always eaten my burgers. He, he says, a Cheeseburger in Paradise is the name of the song. And he says, I like mine with lettuce and tomato, Heinz 57, and french fried potatoes. Um, I like mine exactly that way, with a little ketchup, um, maybe a little yellow mustard, um, a little slice or two of good green iceberg lettuce, fresh, of course, and a good, we call this a beefsteak tomato. Here this is called a fleisch tomato, meat tomato. And for me, this is, this is quintessential American hamburger. I saw this today at the Attica and I went, man, look at it, it's beautiful. It's a very good color red. I bet you this thing tastes amazing. And it's big enough where you make one slice for one burger and you're done, perfect. Again, I know I talked about my perfect burger and sometimes there are variations on, on my perfect burger or what I consider my perfect burger. Sometimes I do add a cheese. I like a good cheddar cheese. But I'm curious, um, what do you guys eat on your hamburger? Write me down in the comments what you guys like to have on what, what sort of uh, condiments you put on them. I'm not, I'm a bit of a purist, so I'm not really happy with people that are telling me they're putting a pineapple mango chutney sauce on their burger. Um, then I don't, I'm not even sure if you really taste the burger anymore. If that's your thing, sorry, no offense, just not my deal. But I would really like to know, if you guys have something that you really recommend for me to put on a burger that I can get here in Germany, let me know. So now we move on to the assembly of the burger. I think this is an important thing. First of all, in assembly, you need more beer. I had this ground up at my butcher today. Here's what I think is important. I use about the width of my thumb. I think another good idea is if you have one of those hamburger presses that pops out a perfect hamburger patty, use that. See, I can already tell that's not enough meat. I'm add a little bit in there. And then I sort of spin it, and I use my thumb as a gauge for thickness. The one thing you don't want, people will do this, and the burger then gets very thin on the edges. So then what you have is here, it's really, really well done, and in here, it's not. Now, if that's what you like, great, but for me, that's not what I do. I'm forming this patty, I'm squishing it together to make it nice and tight. And I'm trying to make sure that it has a relatively uniform thickness over the whole burger and a good thick edge. It's an unbelievable thing. You know, when I was making these patties, somebody drank my beer, so I had to get another one. When I make my burgers, what I do is I, I really get the grill super, 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 super hot. So the second part of the Florida story, we bought the fatty meat. They all argued with me, and even though the butcher said it was going to make a fantastic burger, they still argued with me. So I went through my normal routine, of course, grab a cold snack, fire up the grill. Also, for the meat, I don't add anything to my meat. Um, I think, for me, I just let the meat stand on its own. It should. It's good meat, right? So, uh, the other part of the story, another part of the story, I asked them to, when we picked up this fatty meat, I asked them, just, just let me, let me show you, let me prove it to you, and if I'm wrong, we'll come back and we'll do it again, we'll get some different meat, but if I'm right, and I, I think I am, you'll love this burger. I like my burgers medium rare or so, so let's dump the burgers on the, gr on the nice hot grill real quick. Maybe you can hear this sound. Ooh, hear that? Perfect. I'm going to leave them on there just for a couple of minutes. The burgers. This raises an interesting point. When I did that video about um, the American food, I tried a pork burger. I'll put the link up here or here. Wherever. And I got a lot of comments about there are pork burgers in the U.S. It's called a McRib. And I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> this is a very serious thing for Americans, burgers. A burger means rind flesh. Beef. For Americans, that I know anyway, burger refers to this. Period. That's it. 
And speaking of that, burgers are made with pride. I mean, you know, I make mine in a specific way. See, oh, smells fantastic. You know, we have certain ways that we want to do it, and everybody does it differently. And the wonderful thing about when you're going over to somebody's house grilling, when they're grilling, or a grill party, um, it's the men gather around the grill with a beer to see, how did he do his? And maybe I can steal some idea from him to use it on mine. So it is a very serious thing. Tongue-in-cheek serious thing. Now, to the buns. I think what's very, very important is that you get the bread to meat ratio perfectly. I chose these brioche rolls. We got them from Edeka. They're already pre-sliced. Um, they're pretty soft. I think the important thing is for me, butter. They have, they're made with butter. You have to have a bun, right? So if you have to have a bun, make it a good one. To me, if, if you're buying a really terrible cheap bun for a burger, that's sort of like buying a Mercedes and then putting the cheapest possible tire on it that you can find. Yeah, it'll work, but how good will that be? Now, cheese. I mentioned this earlier. I found these two little fake cheese things, and I'll try it. Let's check the burgers. Oh, man, look at that. While the burger's firing up here, almost done, I'm going to cut the tomato. See if you can see that. About so thick. So to finish up the burger story, went out to the grill, fired it up. It made a total of 14 burgers. I was able to eat two. I didn't make them so big because there was a lot of women. I made them maybe three quarters of the size of these. There were six of us. The young kid, Ramon, you know who you are. He ate four of these burgers. He, pretty much everybody else ate two. So anyway, they loved them. They loved it. So take my word for it. Try next time just a small amount of fatty hamburger. I think you might like it. I think it's a beer break time. I think we might have one that's done here. Now you're going to see what I mean by good bun to burger ratio. Your bun should be just about the same, the same size as your bun. No more, no less. Tomato. A little lettuce and the top bun. Now, doesn't that look beautiful? And for the first one, no ketchup, no mustard. Remember what I said, a couple minutes on one side, a couple minutes on the other, give or take. When the juice that stops coming out of it is, is no longer red, it's well done. It's, it's a little bit pink on the inside. Like this, to me, that's fantastic. Now, let's see what this fatty burger tastes like. Ooh, let's try this burger. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. You can see it's sort of juicy, it's sort of fatty. But <laughs> trust me, that's how a burger should be. Good, juicy, for me a little pink on the inside, with good quality meat. So we have a couple of different, Knorr, that's a big name in the U.S., sort of just wanted to try a little bit of their burger sauce, and then I don't know what this one is, Devile burger sauce, I love the picture. This one looks a little bit more like the Bar uh, Big Mac sauce. First the Knorr, hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. hmm. Yeah, okay. There's a picture of the mustard on there, so it has a little bit of a mustard flavor to it, which isn't bad. It's a little bit different. I'm not so sure I like it. Now let's try the cheap one. <laughs> the cheap one. Mmm. Sorry. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Wurzig, cremig. I think Wurzig means, I don't know, 
This is pretty good. I'm eating that. That's delicious. So we're going to throw a little bit of that cheese on there. A little double helping of cheese on there. Is the camera lopsided or am I? I got a little cheese on there. I just thought we'd give that a shot. It's a lot of meat. It looks so good though. Can you see that? Wow. That's amazing. That's really good. I'm just, I didn't dress it really properly, but I just want to try just a little bit of ketchup. That's the thing. Oh, there we go. Just a little bit of Heinz 57 and a little bit of yellow mustard. So, oh, so let's try a little ketchup, mustard, cheese. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Mmm. I love ketchup. <laughs> the mustard okay. The mustard's okay. But I do like that cheese. That is I don't know, I think that's just fake. Fake sort of cheese, but it's very delicious. Alright. I'm out.